you everybody for joining us today. We're really excited. We know that it is spring break. So thank you for if you uh, are off with your kids taking the time to uh, pop in and join us. Um, obviously, you know, we had we had 29 people sign up. So yeah. thanks for showing up. Yeah. <laughs> Always tough when everyone's in vacation mode. Um, yeah, so we are really excited uh, to have Tom on today. Before we dive into what he's going to talk to us about, obviously, uh, I'll make some introductions. You know, Katie, our senior loan officer for the Rice team. I'm Chelsea Delia, production manager for the Rice team. Um, not here is Tim Cusson and Israel Pavia. They both are working on our front end qualifying buyers. Um, Tim just had a baby yesterday, so uh, we're really excited. And so Israel is doing double duty right now. <laughs> so that's why he's not joining us. And then we have Shelby Gallagher, who is doing all of our marketing and put this together. Um, and she did an awesome job. So um, that's our team. And then we have the man of the hour, Tom Story. He is a real estate agent. He is based out of Canada and ranked top 1% of the realtors in his marketplace. He presents to realtors. He's been, I'm gonna screw this up, named one of the top 35 realtors under 35 in Canada. Um, so we are really excited that he's gonna come here and speak to us about educating buyers and attracting more business. He is also experiencing the same type of struggles as we have in the Tahoe trucking market. So I'm gonna turn it over to him. And like he said, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt and we'll also have time at the end for questions too. Awesome, thank you, Chelsea, that was great. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. So I'll give you all kind of a bit of a background before we, we really get into the nitty gritty of like, you know, all the points I'm gonna share with you today. So I, uh, I got my real estate license when I was 22 years old. And uh, my first six months, I was ready to quit like five times. I was making no money. It was so frustrating. And what, what I kept looking at was like, okay, I see these people that were succeeding at a very, very high level. And I'm like, what is it that they're doing that I'm not doing? And what I learned now going back, it, you know, it takes time. And that first two years in real estate, it's like a roller coaster. And even though roller coasters should only be in amusement parks, it shouldn't be part of your business it's still a reality of how it's always going to happen. And I remember getting to a point, I, I actually, I went to a, a real estate conference in Toronto, uh, in Ontario, um, at the end of my first year in real estate. And it was like, my mind was going crazy because I heard all these crazy ideas and I'd watch these people on stage that were like so successful. I'm like, what are they doing that I'm not? Like, how do I take myself to the next level? And what I've come down to, and, and I'll really dig into this today, is the thought process on this. I think visibility beats ability. So hear me out. So I don't think that it's more important than ability. It just comes first. So visibility is marketing. Now, I'm sure all the real estate agents watching this, you've done a deal with another top realtor in your market and you've got to the end of your transaction and you're like, that person was fine, but they weren't like amazing. How do they get all the listings, right? And because I promise you in this industry, like income and, and intelligence aren't side by side. It's structures, it's systems, it's making sure you put yourself out there. And like a fun analogy is like, whatever your favorite food spot is or burger joint, they probably don't sell the most amount of burgers in the world, even though you think they have the best food. The person that sells the most amount of burgers or sells most of the homes or toasters or whatever the product is, are the companies that are the best at marketing. So I think that it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do if nobody knows. So my thought process when I got started, I, I sell a lot of condos in downtown Toronto. The last two years, we've sold the third most condos in the city. Like I do a lot of business in that area. And my mindset when I got started was like, how does the person that lives in this property have any idea who I am and why would they call me if they're considering selling, right? It's just like the visibility aspect of it because I think the visibility is how can you get a seat at the kitchen table? Once you get the seat at the kitchen table or you get the Zoom call or you get the appointment, whatever it is, then the ability comes out and you better know what you're talking about. I actually think like our industry, we spend so much time going out there hunting for opportunities, 
And then when you get the opportunity, you're not always prepared because all you're doing is trying to find new opportunities. Your buyer presentation, your listing presentation, the questions they're going to ask, um, the back and forth you're going to have, because basically they all ask the same questions. It's just knowing what's going to come at a certain point. Sometimes I feel like a robot when I'm doing consultations now, because it's like structured in a certain way. They all ask the same thing at the same time. But I could do with my eyes closed. I could point on my, like, I've done it so many times. And that's the ability portion of it. And I'm sure if you're spending your time being here on this call, your ability and the fact that you care for clients and, and give them great client experience, I'm not questioning any of that, but it's like, okay, but how do we take that and make sure more people know about it? And, and that was my whole mindset. And basically the, the name that I put on this talk is the seven figure real estate playbook. And the reason that I did that for video specifically is because that first conference I told you about, I was sitting in the back row. I was like, okay, I got, I got to do something different here. I wrote down in capital letters in my little notebook, like video. And this was back in 2015. So people weren't like, people were getting into it, but not really getting into it. And I was like, I, that's my visibility metric. I need to do something that people are going to know who the heck I am. And I started putting up videos every single month and I would do market updates. And I promise you, my first videos sucked. I was literally like in a full suit and tie trying to be this person that I wasn't. I would like have my notes below. I would like just look down every like 10 seconds to see what I was going to say. I would get feedback and my friends were like, Hey, like, you know, good video, but your eyebrows didn't move. Like, <laughs> cause I was just so like, like just trying to be this person that I'm not. And now I film videos wearing sweatshirts and hoodies and whatever the heck I want. And I'm getting a ton of business rolling in from it. So it is really funny where like, that, that being authentic thing that we all hear, and I'd say it's even played out a little bit at real estate conferences, but it's because it's true. <laughs> it, and the cool thing is, I'm sure a lot of you have worked with a client that maybe by the end of the transaction, you're like, okay, I'm happy that was over because we just didn't see eye to eye. The cool thing about video is that when you put out enough content, people are secretly dating you online without you knowing, and then they reach out when they're ready. And you know who's not going to reach out? The people that don't like your style. So you've, you're, not only are you getting the people that speak your language, but the people that you're going to clash heads with aren't going to reach out anyways. And I love that. That's so rad. Did yeah. you guys all hear that? Secretly dating you. I love that. It's so true. Like they're so, they're looking at you. They're seeing what you're doing, what you're about. Thank you. That's a great analogy. Well, Every person here, I guarantee at some point last night or this morning, you were on your phone scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, looking at somebody else's stuff, but you didn't like it. You didn't comment it and you didn't tell them, Hey, I watched your video today because <laughs> that's not normal, but they're consuming there and they'll reach out when they're ready. Right. So I, I think that's, that's definitely just like a cool way to look at um, what our business is. And when I talk about video um, and like I run a course, I got about 225 realtors in my course where I teach fundamentals of video and how to start YouTube channels and, and really bring it into your business. I want to make just one thing clear beforehand at how I think your business should be structured in terms of what's worked for me. And I can tell you my first year in real estate, I made $46,000. I was living in my parents' basement. I was surviving. I was doing a lot of leases in downtown Toronto. We've built it up every year. For the last two years, we've done well over $2 million gross. And it's not because I got smarter, okay? It's not, that's not it. I got better at marketing. I got really good at presentations and really good at people knowing who the heck I am. That's literally the only difference. I work less now than I used to. Now I've structured a team around me now. I became a dad four months ago. So I've got a, a young baby upstairs. Like I knew all these things needed to happen, but I need to have the systems around me where, where business was coming to me. And it's like, wouldn't it be a cool thought process if your phone could only take incoming calls? <laughs> like, I know that's not realistic, but you know, wouldn't that be a nice way to think about your business? You're just putting so much stuff out there that when people are ready, they reach out and they have that conversation with you. Um, so, so that's kind of like how I look at this whole thing. I'm going to show you some slides today and we're going to run through everything together, but just before we get into that, I want to share one last thing. So here's how I look at business in general. I think all real estate agents should be spending most of their time on their repeat and referral. Those are the people that already know you, like you, and trust you. Now, when you're a newer agent, 
they will tell you, oh yeah, talk to the people that know you, like you, and trust you. The, what they don't tell you is that they know you and like you, but they don't yet trust you as a real estate agent. That first two years takes time. Um, so don't worry, don't burn bridges if they don't use you. Like just keep working and working and working. And once they've seen that you've survived by yourself with strangers, basically, that's when your friends and family actually trust you in what you do. Now, the database is first. So when I started doing videos, my only thought process was when I'm looking in the camera lens, I'm speaking, I only have 320 people in my database and I'll explain why it's a small database as well. Um, I'm talking to them. When I'm looking at the camera, I'm talking to them. I'm thinking about them. I would just post it everywhere else because I had it and it gives you leverage as well. Of the 125 sales I did last year, 76 of them came from those 300 and just over 300 people. They didn't all move, but they referred me their friends or their family, and I just treat them like gold. So I think for every 100 people you have in your database, and I don't mean the random online lead that you put, I mean, real people that you see and you know, and you like, and you trust and would stop you, you should be able to do minimum 10 transactions a year for every 100 people in your database. And staying visible is a big reason why. Once you've figured that out, I have to think you have to look at number two, and this is going to line up perfectly today, is strategic alliances, okay? Loan officers, um, lawyers, BNI groups, other real estate agents, okay? So when I look at, at outside my core database, where do I get opportunities? Um, we have lots of loan officers in, in my uh, area that I work that will send me buyers that are qualified. I have different groups that I'm a part of. I, and the other realtor thing, you know, I think it's kind of funny in our industry, social media, especially Instagram, all of you, your real estate accounts, you just follow other realtors and other loan officers. And we all kind of pat each other on the back and, and, and we all follow each other. So I actually think the content you're putting out on Instagram, you have to understand who your audience is. It's other real estate agents but other real estate agents outside where you sell. We did 26 sales last year from incoming referrals from real estate agents that sold outside my market that referred me their clients when they came to Toronto. So I think that's a massive opportunity that if you have a system in place for your clients, you also have to have a system in place for your realtor referrals. And I would say even like print out a map, just like a physical map of your area and look at all the areas outside or where's the area, the biggest, where the biggest amount of population comes from moving to your area that you sell in, start reaching out to realtors out there and just say, Hey, I'm creating a realtor referral program. I'd love to give you every, every opportunity I have with five clients moving out that way. Do you think you could do the same really easy conversation and you get to meet people. And that's why I'm a big believer in like going to conferences, not just being the agent that gives out your business card, like really meeting people and having true relationships with them because half of the people that are going to view your stuff on social are other realtors. So you have to understand that and know that you're putting out content. It's not just for the random person that doesn't know you. It's for the other people as well. This takes me to my, my third thought. So repeat and referral alliance business. And then the third one is going to be brand new business. So you can run a thriving real estate or mortgage business on strictly repeat and referral and alliances. But once you've done those two things and have enough of return on them, you have to start looking at bringing in new business. Like a perfect business model is 33% repeat, 33% referral, 33% new. Because that means that you're bringing in fresh, you know, fresh people all the time. And then they're going back into your database once you've done a good job to them. And that's how the business grows. So when I look at brand new business, um, the, there's, there's kind of three areas that I would focus in right now. Um, the first one is actually, I've gone completely old school in my marketplace. We send like, like flyers, like physical mail flyers every single month to about 10,000 condos downtown Toronto. I, I got four listing appointments in the last week from those. Now, it took me a year to get any traction. And what I'm doing is on the flyers, and I'll share this with all of you. It's like the, the standard stuff that we all do. But then there's a huge call to action with a QR code because QR codes made a comeback during COVID, right? Now everyone knows what they are. Again, they were ahead of their time. And if you scan it, it will take you directly to my appointment page. Now I use a program called Calendly and they can literally book seller consultation. Boom, I wake up in the morning, I look at my phone. I'm like, I have three appointments this week and I didn't even know these people existed. So you're taking old school marketing, combining it with new school technology. And it's really, really cool. When I think of, of a lead, like what is a true lead? 
if someone physically got something, took out their phone, scanned it, booked in a, that's a lead. Okay. The person you, you tricked on Facebook to sign up for your, for your, you know, is not a lead. It's, it's that's a, different a huge lead. lead though. They already gave you an appointment. That's impressive. And calendar is great. We just, we just adopted it. So highly it's, recommend that. It's the best. And I'd say it allows me to control my time. I say when I'm available, when they book in, they think it's on their time, but it's on my time. Absolutely. You can't book appointments with me after 5 p.m. I don't work on Sundays. Like I'm very rigid with it. Um, for that alone, I'd recommend Calendly. It's like the best, I don't know, it's like 12 bucks a month or something. It's, it's be the best value, I think, other than like, like DocuSign <laughs> or like something that's making our lives easier, right? Um, so so now, now that's now getting me to my next point it, is the video aspect of it, okay? So I was completely wrong about YouTube two years ago. I used to say YouTube was a place you would put your videos so that they'd show up on your website. Or you put your property videos to show the seller that, hey, you, you have the nice listing video. The amount of traction that we are getting from YouTube, and what I'm basically doing is putting out a video twice a week, if not once a week, twice a week. I'm trying my best, doing it consistently. And I'm speaking to a new audience because Instagram is just other realtors. Facebook is all the people you already know. YouTube is a bunch of new people. And what I want you to think is what is the type of content someone would want to know if they're moving to an area that you sell in? So could you guys tell me like, what's a, what's a neighborhood that a lot of sales happen in that someone would farm in your area? Tahoe Donner. Sorry, say that again? Tahoe Donner. Tahoe Donner. Okay. So I would think, what does it cost to buy a single family house in Tahoe Donner? Like these are, these are video titles. What are the best schools in, in X? How much does it really cost to buy a condo? I don't know if condos are in there, but whatever, whatever people would type into Google, if they were going to move to your area, that's the content they want to watch. They do not want to watch. Here's the five reasons I'm a great real estate agent. They don't care. They don't care. They're there for information about their move. And once I started kind of switching my mindset and putting out videos, talking about what's going on in my market, and here's what I'm seeing with the market trends. And here's the five mistakes you want to avoid if you're moving to Toronto or, you know, I think like Google is YouTube, right? So when people are Googling something, if you have a YouTube video with that same title, it's going to show up for them. And when you start, I'll be honest with you, the first three to six months of creating video content, you can feel like you're talking to a brick wall. You're like, hey guys, welcome back. But you know, no one's watching. <laughs> but you gotta, <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. And I will tell you what really changed for me is the first 30 seconds of every YouTube video, I will have a call to action. That's like, I'll say like, here's what we're going to talk about. And just before we get into that, I am a local real estate agent here in the city of Toronto. If you want to book a buyer consultation, a seller consultation, or just a call to chat about real estate, the first link in my bio is my appointment page. That's it. The first 30 seconds of every, so there's a call to action. I'm getting so many appointments from YouTube these days. It's crazy. We've already sold eight properties this calendar year from YouTube. Six buyers, two sellers. It is more buyer heavy, but the opportunity is insane. And some realtors have tapped into it, but really nobody has. Like it, you could easily be the person in your market if you made content that someone living there would actually find valuable. So I want you to think of like, what is YouTube worthy? when you're putting this together and, and a way to get great like titles for videos, like look at what the news is in your area for real estate. Cause, cause you have to play a little bit of the clickbait game. You got to get them there. Like it's the same thing. That's the visibility. And then you show them you have the ability when they're watching the video, but it, it is so crazy to me how much the opportunity there is just in this one platform. Um, for Instagram, now I'm not a TikTok guy. I'm not going to teach you any dances today. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's a good platform, but I think TikTok mostly feeds ego, not bank account. I think it, it pushes video. You're going to get more views than you've ever gotten anywhere before. And it's definitely a huge thing. But if I look at where buyers and sellers are actually coming from in my business, it's YouTube. And if I'm spending time on Instagram, it's making Instagram reels. Because every second you spend on a reel is a second away from TikTok. And Instagram reels is the most mature platform available right now that will push your content forward organically. So that's kind of how I look at the business. Um, I'm going to share my screen here and, and actually get into the presentation. Um, and, and as I'm going through this, same thing as before, if you want to stop and ask me questions, by all means, go for it. Um, 
here's what I'm going to focus on first. So I want to just hit on a few fundamentals and then we're going to dig really deep into video. And when I teach you aspects of video, I don't want any of you to fall into the trap of there's probably realtors in your marketplace that are pretty good at video, but don't sell a lot of homes. And I have no interest in teaching you that. I want to show you the type of videos that actually help you book more appointments. Okay. Every successful agent I know is an appointment setting machine. That's where they spend their days thinking, how can I get in front of a new buyer? How can I get in front of a new seller? Could I be showing properties and making offers right now? That's it. If you don't have one of those booked, you're doing other activities. So just before we get into that, this is my favorite quote. So Seth Godin, I'm sure a lot of you know him. If none of your coworkers are making fun of you, you're doing it wrong. So keep this in mind as you get started on putting yourself out there. I remember when I first started doing videos, I get to my office at 7 a.m. to record because I didn't want anyone to see me doing it. And like, they would all give me so much shit. And they're like, this is not how you sell homes. And then a year later, they're like, wait, wait, what camera do you use? How do you make those videos? Wait, you sold how many properties? It's really funny how they're skeptics until you get results and then they're your fans, okay? So just keep in mind that if no one's giving you a little bit of crap, it's probably because you're in your comfort zone. And getting out of it was the best thing I ever, ever did for my business. Like really, really was. I want to give this to you on a numbers perspective. So this is my Toronto market, but I'm going to relay it back to where you guys work. So I know that there was 26,000 more sales in my market in 2021 than there was in 2020. That's about 30% more opportunity. We have a buy and sell on every side. So there was 53,000 opportunities. Now, whatever the normal amount of sales is in your market, I have a good idea that in 2021, it was probably one of the biggest years ever in terms yeah, of was. the pie was bigger. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Like our, our interest rates are slowly moving up here. Our market's starting to cool off finally. And I think like what we saw during this craziness of COVID real estate doesn't last forever. And I think the pie, that doesn't mean markets crash or anything like that, but the pie is smaller. And I think when pies get smaller, the really good agents actually eat more of it because we are in a market that inexperienced agents could sell real estate because the market was really good. When every home's not selling, you need really, really skilled realtors to have those conversations. And we're moving from order taker to salesperson. You could be an order taker and run a thriving business the last two years. That's the reality. Now you're going to have to have harder conversations with clients as things are not as crazy as they were. So it's really working on your skills. And I just say this because a lot of realtors I talk to tell me, they're like, Tom, either 2020 or 2021 was my best year ever. I'm like, no crap. <laughs> like the prices were up. There was more opportunity. I hope it was because it was the market's best year too. So I say this kind of jokingly, but I just want everyone to recognize that what we saw last year probably doesn't last forever and things are going to get back to closer to what we expected. Yeah. Right? And Tom, what I would say to that too, is I would echo that is it's the sales skills now. It's not just order taking because even for us, you know, mortgages, what we're finding is that people are leaving, you know, there's going to be 30% less loan officers this year because they, they don't know how to sell. Yep. And they don't know how to add value to a client. And I think it's the exact same in the real estate side of that um, for selling homes. And so I just love that you're sharing that. And I hope everybody's hearing that because also what you're saying is we got to get ourselves out there and market so yeah. that we do know that the buyers do and sellers do know who we are as agents is what I'm speaking to, but us as mortgage brokers too, but we really have to get out there. So I'm hoping everybody really hears you about the videos and really getting out there and not, not being worried about that because that's also a sales skill. I mean, putting yourself out there and educating people is a sales skill. And so I mean, it's up in the game. What all of us are basically are presenters. Now, I present to groups like this. I just spoke to 1200 realtors in person two weeks ago. Like it's nice to get, but when I'm sitting across the table from a buyer and a seller, it's the same thing. I'm a presenter and I, and I have to be a skilled presenter and know what they're going to say. And let's say you saw your favorite comedian two years ago, you go back, see them again. And they told all the same jokes. You'd feel like you wasted your money. Yeah. So the clients you helped buy a property four years ago that they need your help now selling it, moving up. You can't go in there and just assume they're just going to choose you because you work with them. You better come in better with more to give because that first time they didn't even know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just keeping that in mind. 
I'm going to hit through a few of these really quick here because I want to really want to focus on the business aspect. I heard someone tell me once that they've been to a lot of real estate agents funerals, but never a retirement party. And that shook my whole world. So I invest heavily in real estate. I practice what I preach. I own five properties. I got eight doors. That's my retirement. Okay. It's not selling properties. It's owning. It's owning and holding long-term. This, this is how I build the lifestyle that I want. So I'm just putting it out there. We're finding great deals for clients. We're working our, like all this is good. Make sure you're doing it for yourself as well. Set yourself up for the future, not just by selling. Because think about how would your business do if you were not there every day? Could it still survive? Could you live the lifestyle that you're looking for? Because real estate mortgage brokers are the same, okay? If our income goes like this, our lifestyle follows right behind <laughs> and it's not helpful for savings. So I think you got to fix that lifestyle and know where the income is going and then put all that money into assets that you believe in and understand. And I understand real estate, so I invest in it. Um, whatever that is for you, I just want to put that out there. This is how This is your retirement fund. Okay, this is your retirement party. It's not going to be how much you sold. It's going to be how much you owned over time. Um, then just quickly on income streams, when COVID first hit, I didn't know if I was going to sell a house for the rest of the year, like go back to like March, 2020. So I thought, okay, if real estate sales is my number one thing, I got to figure out other things. So I run online courses. I get paid for some speaking gigs. I have income properties. I got some money in the stock market. I do like you know, YouTube pays me a little bit. I have enough side income that has nothing to do with me selling properties that I can support about 50% of my lifestyle. And so just a thought, it's like, if you want it to go away for three months or you know, you're not doing great health-wise, does your business still run? Because if the answer is no, and it's 100% you, you do not have a saleable asset or something that can be run long-term. It's, it's you. And I think we have to take ourselves out of the equation sometimes to figure out how it can run, not just with us. So this is my favorite part. And then I promise I really get, will get to the video aspect. Um, leverage. Everybody talks about leverage. It's like the number one word. I want more leverage. I have to, how do we get leverage? So there's three types of leverage. There's time leverage in your business as a real estate agent. How do you get your time back? Well, you hire people to do tasks for you. You get administrators, you have, you have, coaches, you have teams, there's, uh, there's people that you can hire. So for me, my biggest thing to get my time back was I don't even write offers anymore. I don't prepare my listing packages. I don't drop off lock boxes. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. I have a team that I pay to do that because I know that if you're a real estate agent and you want to make $500,000 a year, you're worth $250 an hour on a 40 hour work week. You want to make a million bucks, you're worth 500 bucks an hour. Keep moving up or down from, from those areas. Okay. So you cannot do that if you're doing tasks that are $20 an hour. It's just simple math, right? So you have to have support if you want to grow. And even if you don't think you need it yet, I promise you to get to where you want to go, you're going to need that to get your time back. Now, once you've got your time back, how do you get income? So how much money did you make when you were not physically there? Okay. So if I look at our business, we did about 2.4 million in commissions last year. And how much that I was directly involved in like actively there physically, I'd say like half of it. The rest was my team because I'm really good at creating opportunities and they would go service. So I know that I have my time and I have enough income without me physically being there that I can now do what I want. And that takes me to my third one, which is impact. We all got into doing what we're doing because we want two or three things. It's usually like a good lifestyle, make a bunch of money. And then you usually get one or the other. You make a bunch of money, but that's all you do. Or you have a good lifestyle because you're not doing enough business because you're just hanging around. How do we find that middle ground? Okay. So I want all of you to just think about like, what is impact? What is the impact leverage that could be for you? Because you don't get impact unless you have time and income figured out. So for me, it's going to my cottage every weekend and hanging out with my baby. That's what I want to do. I don't want to take calls on the weekend. I have people that can do that for me. I don't need to do that anymore. What it is for you could be a different thing, Right. So maybe it's charity. Maybe it's just spending time with family, going to more sporting events, going to more vacations, but you don't get that if you're constantly on your phone. Okay. You have to figure that out at some point. And it's really going to make a difference. I want to then go over a few of the main benefits of video that people that I don't think really talk about. The first one is it allows you to leverage your message. Me speaking to you is better than me speaking to one person. Me speaking to 1200 realtors last week is better than me speaking to one person. 
The most recent YouTube video I put out was based on the, the federal budget here in Canada, which has a lot of changes coming to real estate. One of them, in fact, being banning foreign buyers for two years. So even Americans can't buy in Canada for the next two years, just so you know, that's about to happen. Ridiculous. But it is what it is. Um, I put that video two days ago. It's got about 5,000 views on YouTube, which is pretty good for my videos. Like I'm not getting crazy numbers. But I looked at the watch hours, which is how much time does someone stand in front of, like how much time did people watch my video for since I uploaded it? And it's only been up for two days and I have 10 days of watch hour. So at some point for 10 days worth of time over the last two days, somebody somewhere was staring at my face talking about real estate. There is literally no amount of money I could spend on marketing to get that same opportunity. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. Um, and they're watching silently. And when they're ready, they will reach out. Okay. So the way I look at it in our businesses, it's the same for mortgage and real estate. If you take a bundle of a hundred leads, and I learned this from a guy named Dean Jackson, who currently lives in Florida. He used to be, a, he was in Canada beforehand, marketing like genius. He said, you take a hundred leads for anything, a toaster, a house, it doesn't matter. 50% of them will buy that product in 18 months. Half of them will buy. 15% will buy in the first 90 days. Now we've been told you bucket people, this buyer said they're going to buy in two months. This seller said they're going to, and they never do what they say they're going to do. Right? So I'm done with bucketing people. It's either now they are ready now, or they are not ready now. But when they are not ready, you still need to be sending content, putting things out there. So they see you and you say top of mind so that the moment they become ready, they reach out to you. That's all I care about. It's like, when you're ready, did you see something that I put out there that month? Was it my video? Did you come to my client party? Was it because I did an open house in your area? I don't care what it was. What did you see of me that would make you want to call me? That's, that's the whole kind of thought process on, on the business. The other thing is, I think it makes you better at what you do. If you have to record yourself talking about something, you better know what you're talking about. So I look at the numbers every single month and like really go through them and understand if I'm going to put a video out there to thousands of people to watch, it better be truthful and I better be fact checking everything I'm saying. And it made me better at real estate, better at understanding the numbers of fundamentally what my market was doing because I had to talk about it. And I think that will force a lot of you that didn't have to know to now like really dig deep into the numbers as well. Silently watching, we talked about, I still think the, the realtor to realtor aspect of video is massive and it's the benefit I never expected, but was become very big. It gets you out of your comfort zone. And the 1% of the time rule is this. I think the average person, maybe it's more like 5%, but let's call it one to 5%. The average consumer only moves once every seven years. Investors buy more frequently, military families, I'm sure move a lot more often, but you average it out, it's one, one time every seven years. So they don't need us that often. And the, and the consumer at home doesn't care about mortgage rates or real estate numbers. And like they're living their lives. We're stuck in our own little bubbles here because what we do, they just want to know when it's time to do something, can they trust someone that can tell them what's going to happen and they're taken care of. They don't care most of the time. So that's what you, need to, you remember is when you're putting this stuff out 99% of the time, they don't need this information and that's okay. But when that moment comes, they need it. If you didn't do it that month, I promise you they got the information from somebody else. Yeah. Um, I don't know what your population growth in terms of people with real estate licenses or mortgage brokers has been in your industry. I'll give you like a hilarious stat. In the city of Toronto, our real estate board is the biggest real estate board in the world. We have 65,000 people with real estate licenses in a population of the greater Toronto era, area of 7.5 million. Wow. 1% of our population has a real estate license whether they're good or not or sell a home or not is irrelevant they exist <laughs> so it's like look they're going to get the information from somebody it might as well be from you um that text takes me to my next point here is everyone right now i want you to think okay we talked about the video aspect how visible is your business really like i know an agent in my marketplace that absolutely dominates like this one section of toronto um, her signs are everywhere. It's the best marketing everywhere. Like it's, you can't not know who she is. Now that's kind of the older school perspective. The sad reality is these days, someone finding out who you are is more likely staring at their phone than it is driving in their car by a street. So I don't, I didn't do blogging cause I suck at blogging. That's why I did video. I just rather talk about it. I can articulate it better than me trying to type it out. Um, 
or is it videos? Is it going old school? Is it door knock? Like all these things work. Nothing doesn't work. You just have to find out what excites you. And, and if you're not currently doing it, could you be doing it to make sure more people know you exist? That's it. Because if you ever have a friend or family that you talk to and they're like, hey, I bought a house. And you're like, wait, you're not, you don't know I'm in real estate? Like, you know, like it, that's your fault. It's not theirs. It's not their job to know what you do. You should be telling them. And there's way to, there's ways to tell them, by the way, that aren't like real estate spam. Okay. There's, there's ways to check in. So if I think about my database, I'm connecting with them at least once a month in some type of touch point. So if it's in January, it's, Hey, I'm sending my trades and services guide, which is a little booklet with everything you need to know with owning a home. Here's all the people that we trust. Here's the accountants, here are the mortgage brokers, everyone in a little booklet. I'm going to send it to your house. If you have any questions, let me know. February, we send them to the home show for free in Toronto. March, we send them uh, updates on their property and we use a video to give them video CMAs to tell them what their property's worth. April, we send them to Blue Jays, like our baseball team. Well, we have something every month. Never, ever have I had to call a client, client and say, hey, are you looking to sell your house? Or could you send me any of your friends? They're not dummies. They get what I'm doing. They understand. But I'm never coming from a sales approach. I'm coming from a value approach. And when you do that, it's amazing how the referrals just roll in. You never have, you, you just basically can sleep well at night and never have to worry about it. I want you to also remember this. So I put this picture up here. This was in 2017. This was in Vancouver, Canada, actually at a conference. This is the first time I ever did public speaking. And the first time I ever did public speaking was in front of 800 realtors, all older than me, all with more experience. And I was so scared, <laughs> like so scared. And what I realized as I walked on, the stage and it was like five minutes in and my nerves had actually calmed down is, is people don't know what you know. Don't assume they know. The way that you're phrasing it is different from what they think. And what you think is obvious or what they think you think is obvious, it's not always the case. So don't let imposter syndrome get in your head. Most trainers or big speakers all across the world are not saying anything new. They are packaging it very well. And I just need you to remember that, that when you're putting out videos, I use this as the analogy, but your client, like we're talking, if you're talking about something obvious that you think is boring, maybe, but, but the average consumer doesn't know what you're talking about. So you might as well educate them and simplify it, simplify as much as possible. Did you know these were the three mistakes people make when they're applying for mortgages? Boom, boom, boom. That's it. That's the video. That's the Instagram reel. Don't go too long. They'll ask questions if they have questions. You have to make it so that the people that, that see it, you almost have to make content for people that are never going to work with you, for the people that are going to work with you to actually find it. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird, but that's kind of the reality of where we're at, we're at right now with the algorithm and just making sure you get in front of more people. Um, there's two types of leads, I believe, in real estate. Um, there are you leads and there are proper leads. So a property lead is, hey, Tom, I, I see your listing. Uh, can you show it to me? I don't have a realtor. Can you show me the, the property? I'm a glorified door opener at that point. I can build rapport with them. I can do my best. I can convert them. We can help them if they'd like. But normally they just want something we have because we have access to the listing. That's okay. These leads are okay. And my team closes a lot of these leads. But if I could choose all day, I want the you lead. I want the person that reaches out and goes, Tom, we'd like to sell our house or we'd like to buy a property. We'd, we'd really like to work with your team. How do we get started? The property is secondary. They want you. Those are the leads that I think we should all be focusing on because they're the best type of leads. And I'll tell you something funny. When I, when I get calls now from people on YouTube, the, I always call them. They're like, oh my God, Like I didn't think you'd actually call. They're like putting you on this mini pedestal. I'm like, I'm a nobody. I don't know. Like in the grand scheme of things, like, why are you excited to talk to me? But they're like, yeah, we've been watching you for eight months and we love all your videos. And, and they're like quoting back to me things I've said in my video. It's so crazy, but it's not an online lead. Like we're told an online lead is this is different. They want to work with you. They've already done their research. It's not a call to say, why should we work with you? It's like, okay, no, we, we like your style. Like how, let's do this. Let's, let's work together. And it's such a difference from like, you know, trying to convince someone why they should work with you versus like, okay, it's already, that's done. Let's just get going. Uh, a much calmer way and, and nicer way to do business, I would say. Um, which takes me to one of my final points here with the two types of videos. You have one to many videos, which is what I do on YouTube, what I put out of there on Instagram reels. And 
and I'll share my channels with you. And you can take a look, you can copy anything I do, just do it in your own way. I know the results are there. We're all doing the same things. The one to many videos are great, but it takes time to build traction. If you don't know where to start, I would do one to one videos. So how would you start with that? Well, get every one of your clients birthdays from here on till the end of the month, film a happy birthday video to them and schedule it to go at 7am on their birthday to their email send it through bomb bomb or another service like that that's the easiest way to do it then to show your skill as a realtor every march and every august we send video cmas and if basically what i'm doing is i'm pulling up on my screen i'm using bomb bomb or loom some type of screen share technology and i'm just saying like um so let's say it's it's katie's house and so here's here's like a live demonstration i would have on my screen the last three sales on katie's street okay and i would be the little bubble in the corner like, hey, Katie, it's Tom. I hope you're doing well. Uh, this is your real estate health check uh, for March. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, I know you have no interest in selling your property, so don't think that's what this is at all. I actually just want to show you what's happening in your area. So I'm calling it the health check because we go to our doctors and our dentists at least twice a year, and I think you, we should be chatting with each other about your real estate portfolio twice a year. So as you can see on my screen here, these are the last three sales. And if you check out house number two, identical floor plan to yours, but wasn't as upgraded and check out that sold price. Anyways, so in my email as well, there'll be a link. You can click on it. You can check out these properties yourself. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. That is sent out to every single person in my database twice a year. It takes a long time. We brought in 21 listings last year that started from that email. Now, did you notice I didn't tell Katie what her home was worth? Wow. Because that fluctuation. Was that was powerful. I, I want you to see that and then go, oh, wow, wait a second. Number two sold for that. Well, what's mine worth? That's the, that's what I'm getting back. It, because if I just go and just give you the information, it's, it's a done conversation. If I just say, Hey, look, what's going on. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I'm creating more appointments from it. Also, if you have a, uh, a client that's gone quiet on you, a buyer, you could send them a similar video with a listing that came out. And I would always start the video, not like, Hey, haven't heard from you in a while. Just be like, Hey, I was, I was thinking about you for this listing. Cause we had chatted about you wanting to buy in this area. And, you know, I know not a lot's come up recently, but check, take a look at these pictures right here. I'm going to put the link below in the email. If you have any questions about this or want to see it, let me know. 30 second email hit with a buyer that's been unresponsive. They're going to respond to that a lot more than they're going to respond to a quick email being like, Hey, are you still active? Like I haven't heard from you for a while. Do something that is different. And I would put in the subject line in these emails so like, first of all, their name has to be in the subject line, like personal video for their name or your updated property value, property address. And there's a, there's an app we use uh, called make it big, um, on iPhone and literally my phone's off right now, but it literally just makes writing big. <laughs> so like, let's say I was sending a video to, uh, to Katie, I would just write, Hey Katie on this, this would be my thumbnail, me holding my phone that says, Hey Katie, so that she would get the email dopamine goes off and she goes, Oh, I'm going to click this. This is actually for me. This isn't a spam email, um, has worked very, very, very well. Um, I actually think one-to-one -one videos are more powerful than one-to-many videos. My best videos, nobody's ever seen because they help me book more appointments. My one to everybody videos are the ones that people see and they help, but these one-to-one -one videos are by far the best thing. We are talking about uh, creating your, your realtor referral list. These one-to-one -one videos will be how you should be reaching out to other realtors and saying like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, like you're on my list. I'm going to try and send you opportunities this year. If you have any questions, like super simple, no editing, straight to the point. You film it, you send it, it's done. Okay. A um, few other things I want to share here. So I can tell you exactly how to waste lots of money on video gear because I've done it. You don't have to, okay? Um, your iPhones are good enough. If you want to get a DSLR camera, I would recommend a mirrorless camera just because it's, it's giving you longevity. Your videos won't look old in four years if you're filming in 4K. And that's what I like about it. Microphone is more important than actual video. If I can hear it but not see it, I'll listen. If I can see it but not hear it, I'll turn it off. So just keep that in mind. The sound is extremely important. This is a $300 microphone from Shure that plugs directly into my thing. It makes me sound way better than me just talking to my computer right now. Lighting is very important. If you've got kids, ask them what ring lights they use for TikToks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like literally go on YouTube and just type in like best ring light. You'll find someone doing a review and spend a hundred bucks on Amazon. 
if you want studio lighting, so I've got a light here, I've got a light here and I've got a light here. That's what helps my lighting in my basement here. Um, natural light is the best. Nothing will beat it. But if you're filming in front of a window, as the sun goes down, you don't want your video to start looking darker over time. So make sure it's a time of day where the light's going to remain there. And then just having a tripod, you don't need a camera person. To, my, my camera just sits on a tripod and that's how I do everything. So that's where you need to start. Uh, if you want to message me on Instagram after this, I can give you like exactly really like everything you need, depending on the level that you're at or where you're trying to go. A few last things here. Okay. This is what the Simpsons look like in season one. That's not what the Simpsons looks like today. So remember that when you're getting started on this, you cannot be comparing your season one to my season nine or somebody else in season 15, or that agent you saw at Tom Ferry that's been doing amazing video. That doesn't matter. They, they didn't start there. That's not where I started. So remember where you start and where you're trying to get are completely different. So stop comparing yourself to people that have been doing it longer. Of course, they're better at it. They've just been doing it longer. That's all it is, right? So just keep that in mind here. Um, these are the types of videos that, that I would start with. I think the monthly updates to your database they're, they're more boring style videos, but when people need that information, it's very valuable to them. Interviewing local businesses, information videos, like, like the Instagram reels that I'm doing. It's like, and by the way, if you're going to do Instagram reels, I would recommend write down 20 ideas, book off a morning, film them all at once. So like I did that two weeks ago and I still have 15 reels I haven't even posted because I just shot them all in one day and just changed my outfit. <laughs> That's an easier way to do it. So you don't have to think like every week, what am I going to do? The video CMA, which we already talked about, super powerful, and the buyer and seller process video. So I'm not going to make you watch that right now. I'm going to send it to you in notes so you can send it out, Katie uh, or Shelby. Okay. Um, it's a video that I send to sellers once an appointment's already booked or to buyers once an appointment's already booked, which is like, here's what you can expect moving forward before we even meet. It's not a meet the team video. It's just a, here's what you can expect along the process. And I found doing that and I send them... You know, I don't have, oh, I do have it with me. I'll show you actually. So we do VIP boxes for our clients. So they're the physical, like huge boxes, my logos on the front. And basically if we get a new buyer or a new seller, even before the appointment, we have this courier to their address. Wow. So inside is, inside is basically the actual physical booklet that we're going to go over when we meet and we don't cheap out. We, we put it on really nice paper. There's a whole bunch of like fun, healthy snacks. We give them a tote bag. We give them some water. Like it's nothing each, it's probably like 40 bucks per box at the end of it. We give them our trades and services guide. Like everything's in one place, even like gummies, just because I know if I'm in competition with another realtor, and I sent them the video beforehand and sent them the video CMA and sent them a VIP package. By the time I walk in there, it's, it's almost already mine. You're just doing things that others aren't. And then when you can go in them and show them that on top of all this, you're actually really good at what you do. It's like a secret weapon. The other agents don't stand a chance. Um, so just making sure you have some type of process for that. I'm going to skip through this video because I, I just for time purposes, Last thing I want to share on YouTube and just give you a, a case study here to show you how possible it is. One of my best friends in real estate, his name is Steve. Now he sells uh, just outside the Vancouver market. Steve uh, defines his personality as like a burnt piece of toast. You got to get to know him to like him. Okay. And like, I say this lovingly, he's one of my best friends. His, he was selling about a hundred homes a year in Surrey, BC, just outside Vancouver. But his database was getting older. A lot of people were leaving the area. He's like, I need to get new business. I was like, all right, get active on YouTube. He went all out. He, he posted three videos a week. This was actually about two months ago. He had about 1,500 subscribers. He has like 6,000 now. He had one video that, that took off, got 250,000 views that his channel just blew up. He did last year alone, I think an extra 120 grand of commission. He started this, by the way, in February, 2021. By the end of the year, he did, I think, nine sales from YouTube. This year already, he's done 10. It's insane. I keep pushing this because it's like, I don't think people really understand how powerful this is if you're consistent. So these are the messages that he would get at the beginning before he started using Calendly. Hey, Steve, I feel like people, he has no idea who these people are. 
Fans you on YouTube, when you get a chance, keep us a call back. We're looking to buy a second property, taking some equity out of our current house. Hey, Steve, I came across you through YouTube while picking my brain about the real estate market systems in Canada. These are people he has no idea. Steve, I'm one of your early subscribers. I've watched all your videos. This one too. I love how you explain everything detail oriented. As you notice, I believe in research. So my girlfriend is leaving the whole process with me. That was probably his first mistake, but we're hoping to build a wonderful relationship with you and your team. Like what, where else do you get these type of messages? So I'm using Steve as a case study because I don't want to just show you my stuff. It's Kate, you are, if Steve can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay. Like seriously, it's so crazy. This is a screenshot of my, uh, of my inbox. This was just from November to December. If I gave you the last month, it would be the exact same. I'm almost averaging an appointment every other day from YouTube or from hard mailers. So these are all calendar appointments from November 2nd to December 3rd, the 14 appointments in a month. And that was the end of the year. So it's just so crazy how powerful this really is. Um, a few final things here. What I really want you to remember, and these are Steve's numbers from last year, but he's already done more business than this this year already. The real ROI from video is appointments. It's not video views. My video that got 200 views got me five appointments. My video that got 15,000 views got me zero. It's all about what you're talking about and if it matters to the person watching. So, so don't get down on yourself if you're not getting the results in terms of the views and the likes and all that kind of stuff. It just matters if one person's watching. And if that one person wants to buy in your area, it is, it is just so, so cool. Um, a few apps I'd recommend on the mobile side. So Canva, I think everyone knows what Canva is at this point. Um, Unfold and Mojo are good for Instagram stories. Giphy or Jiffy, depending on what you want to call it. Um, Spark Camera is really cool. It's kind of like Snapchat in a way that like you can go through properties or things and put your your thumb down. And when you take it off, it just stops recording. And then you do it again and again and again. And you can stitch together really cool property tours on your phone or just what your day was like, like little vlog style. Um, I think there's a yearly fee for Spark Camera, but it's, it's worth it. And then make it big is what I was talking about before, where it just makes words big on your phone. So this is all pretty basic stuff, but used in the right way consistently. And what I think the difference is between real estate agents at the top of the industry or mortgage brokers at the top of the industry versus people that are just getting by uh, is three basic things. I think they are extremely consistent. I think they are patient. They know that the systems work and they're not going to give up in three months because over time, that's when you get the real results and they execute on their ideas. I'm in a mastermind group with, uh, with like some of the top realtors in Canada. And I feel like the little fish in there. And what wows me every time is like, we talk once a month and every time we come back, if there's an idea from the last session, every single one of them is like, yeah, that's in place. They don't mess around. They're not planners. They, they get shit done. <laughs> like that, that is really what I think separates the top of our industry from the bottom. Um, that's it for, for me today. I, I hope you found that valuable. And I, I just, the last thing I'll, sh I'll kind of, leave you with before we get to questions is like, there is, there is such a huge opportunity, like such a massive opportunity we have. And, and even if the market moves to a more uh, skilled versus order taker market, that's good for all of you. I think that's going to make a huge difference for us. So uh, I hope you found that valuable. And if you have any questions about what I talked about today, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Um, thanks so much for that. I'd say one of my biggest ahas, but it's been an aha for a long time is people work with people they know, like, and trust that you started with that. And that's so true. And then I like how you ended it with the people in the top sales are people who are consistent, patient, and execute. I think those are all amazing, amazing things. And I'd just be curious how people feel about video because I feel like, yeah, a lot of people aren't doing YouTube and our thing. And I know I've had my personal struggles with trying to put that together. But do you guys have any questions while we have Tom, the expert, on what your struggle is with why you're not doing YouTube or how you can do YouTube? Anything that you'd like to, sh to ask or share? This is your time including my team. You know what I think too? Uh, and if you have questions, feel free to just start talking is if you were already successful in the industry five years ago, you mm -hmm. didn't need to do all these things to, to continue to get results. So the newer agents have, 
have no choice, right? Where mm-hmm. the people that have been doing it for a bit successful for 10 plus years didn't have to do it. And that's why the relationship with video is love, hate, or just hate, hate. <laughs> You're yeah. like, I don't want to do another freaking thing. But I think the reality is moving forward, the generation of buyers that are coming up, you got to be in front of them. I agree. And sorry, I'm looking around and my, my, uh, my laptop's about to die. So I'm looking for my charger. I didn't have it plugged in. Tom, do you ever get stuck on what content to put out? And if you do, like, where do you find your inspiration for, for content? If you're doing it for so long, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, normally what I'll do is actually look at, I'll go to Google and type in like Toronto real estate and see what the headlines are. Um, and I'll pick ideas off of that. So I would do the same thing in your market or just like anything. If there's something you're talking about in your office with other real estate agents or mortgage brokers, that's like a hot topic. Talk about that. Cause I find the videos where I'm just sharing a story do way better than me talking about the stats from the last month. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think as an old school person, I'd say one of my struggles has always been who's going to edit it. How do you put it up? All those type of things. And I know for me, I finally found somebody who can help me with that. So that's good, but it's taken me a long time. That has been one of my biggest struggles for a long time, which I don't know if other people who are older, like me, old school from been in the industry for decades would have that same issue. But yeah, I, I actually think you should know the fundamentals of editing, but you shouldn't be editing your own stuff. I think you should be outsourcing that. Um, you can go to upwork.com, find people there. How I found my editor is I literally post on my Instagram stories, like looking for a freelance editor 15 hours a week. And I had all these people reach out. Um, and even what's kind of cool is like my real estate team, every single person on my team, except for one person found me through my content that brought, I never had to recruit. Cause they come to me, even like my two newest agents used to watch my YouTube videos while they were taking their real estate license. Wow. So it's, it's attracted me building up my team as well as the client side as well. That's great. Okay. But yeah, if you, but honestly the, for editing, if you go to like, I have a course I could sell you, but truthfully go to YouTube, type in how to edit on iMovie, Final Cut Pro, or if you're on Windows, what program you're using. And there'll be someone there that can, and if you can put in three hours, you'll learn the basics. Okay, great. Great advice. Well, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions, but feel free to let us know. And I know we have another person coming next, next month, which is about insurance, because we live in a very, Tom, we live in a very high fire danger zone. Uh. And so we're having come on someone come and talk about one, the fair plan, but also other alternatives to the fair plan. So it'll be a great, great mastermind next week for just practical stuff, skill stuff that you'll need to, to learn for just day-to-day sales in our area. So Tom, thank you so much. I'll have Chelsea say goodbye because Chelsea introduced you. Cool. Yeah, that was fantastic. Loved every second. And I've been creeping on his YouTube as well. So I suggest you guys do that. It's he's got some good content for sure. Here, I'll you put, didn't know uh, it, but we're dating, me and Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's married and he's married. So. I've got lots of people I date online. I just don't know it. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day and go have a great spring break. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <clears throat>